Like Didi joining us now in yeah. today's interview with the Didi is brought to us by FanDuel, Golly. America's number one sportsbook. Right now, brand new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time than right now to get in on the action. The app is easy to use, and they have a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL and an official partner of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Aditi, how you doing today? Where's she at? Hold on. I got, I got a question. She at? Hold on. I got a question. Are you, I'm uh, right here. Oh, you right here? Right I got here. Question. I, I got in. I didn't get an argument. I was in a grocery store, and somebody asked me. Uh, it was like you weren't uh, eating the ham, were you? You weren't eating food before. Oh, you were remember that it? story? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to eat all the ham. Like, yeah, yeah. they got samples. Um, this lady was talking, and she was like, "Yeah, you know, my my daughter's getting ready to go to a dance or whatever." And she says, uh, "I asked her. I said, she's going to a dance. That's cool." She was like, "Yeah, today's going to be her first day of wearing makeup." And I said, "Whoa, hey, whoa." Uh, I said, how old is she? She's like 11 or 12. What What is the statue of limitation and in, in the age on, on wearing makeup in, 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 the, in the DD household? Like, I got to figure this out. I don't know if she was out of pocket or not. 12? That's early. You know, well, I feel like that's a special occasion. Right? Okay. <laughs> like, it's a holiday. So there's exemptions. I mean, that's totally different than wearing makeup to school every single day. But if yeah, it's that, a dance right. and you're getting a little lip gloss on yeah. and maybe a little blush, like, I think that that's acceptable as long as it's not an everyday sort of thing. But yeah. no, no full I mean, blown kid, smoke. My daughter's only four, so I can't yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, da my daughter loves to play in my makeup. She doesn't yeah. actually put any of it on. Sometimes I draw her little tattoos with my eyebrow pencils. But uh, she will occasionally take a powder brush and pretend that she's putting sparkles on her face. She's not really, but she pretends. Yeah, by the time I have kids, I'll be too old. not wearing makeup it's preschool. That's not happening. Different cultures treat things like this differently, whether it's earrings or makeup or, you know, depending on where you grew up or what religion you are. True. what country that, you're from no you know what and adam that's such a good point my ears were pierced when i was two months old and right. i pierced my daughter's ears before she was a year old and i know people who won't allow their daughters to have their ears pierced until they're 12. and for mm. us culturally in india you you know right. indians do pierce their ears early and i sort of thought of it as well she won't really feel the pain when she's a baby right and why not Didi, my mom tried to put me on punishment. I was 21 when I got my ears pierced. She tried to be like, you ain't going nowhere. I said, I'm bigger than you now, dog. I'm living in dorms. What are you talking about? By, by the way, this, this I'm is bigger than you now, dog. Yeah, really. This is really disturbing. I actually got sent home from junior high school, a.k.a. middle school, because my – and I didn't do this on purpose. I didn't even realize this was an issue. My shorts were apparently too short. Like I was trying oh to throw my. up my leg. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. Oh. Well, how dare you? Oh my. Oh my God. Is that crazy? Because things uh. were revealed from the shorts? I mean, like when you sat down, were people able Nothing to Nothing was revealed. <laughs> they, they were just slightly, here's the crazy thing. So this well, is Didn't nuts. you just say I'm long-legged? This is well, what the issue is? This is the thing, Adina. I'm long-legged, he's not. I'm not long-legged, but here's the deal, okay? I'm trying, Jay. I'm Let trying. Me explain, that was a <laughs> Let me explain effort. it to you, all right? In my junior high school, what they were trying to do is the girls, <laughs> we liked it as boys that the girls were wearing short shorts, right? But because of the patriarchal society, they tried to prevent the girls from wearing short shorts. So if they were going to make a rule... They had to make the rules say nobody can wear shorts above okay, the knee. Okay, but how short could these shorts have been? Were you wearing Daisy? I'm trying to tell you, you <laughs> I, I, my my shorts were like an inch above my knee. It was completely appropriate. It wasn't weird looking at all. But you couldn't have shorts above the knee because of this stupid rule. <laughs> I bet there's Wait, but that wasn't the era when you were school. in middle school. It wasn't when basketball players were wearing those baggy shorts. Basketball oh. players were still sort of wearing mid-thigh shorts at that point, right? Right, but I wasn't even wearing mid-thigh shorts. Mid shorts. I wasn't. Yes, they were wearing mid-thigh shorts, but I wasn't. It was just like an Okay, inch but this kind of begs mind. the question. With yeah. Aaron, who chooses his clothes? And do you monitor? Do you say, no, that doesn't work, or yes, that's fine? Oh. <laughs> uh, or I just mostly let him that. wear what he wants. Like, he, this morning he said, can he wear shorts? 
Oh, we said, have yeah. this fight every day in my house. Well, oh, I mean, every it's going to be 60 degrees today. So I was like, okay, you can wear shorts. And I, but he doesn't wear anything crazy. If I if his outfit looked ridiculous, I wouldn't let him wear pajamas to school. But he makes good choices. I basically let him choose. You know, if it's really cold and he's wearing a t-shirt, I'll tell him to throw a sweatshirt on top of it. But you gotta let you know, kids grow up a little bit. You know, my preschool, my yeah. daughter's preschool the teachers tell me they know when I'm home and when I'm on the road at a game. Oh wow! Because yeah, of that, this levels. Yeah, my my, well, my kids' we, teachers we, would have said the same thing because yes. <laughs> Dad sends them to school looking a whole lot different than Mom did. Yeah, that's did. true. Dad, oh my, my God. daughter, when she was seven, she would say, pictures, Dad, this I'm doesn't like, go you, together. <laughs> forget not even going together. Can you, like, run a brush through a hair, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't have to worry yeah. about that with my son. We're not running <laughs> brushes through hair. <laughs> I'm sorry for derailing, but that was the funniest yeah. thing I've ever heard. I, like, I didn't know that yeah. about Bulls. My Thank problem was I let my mental image take over. So yeah. I didn't hear I mean, most of what Bull said. if you guys are done said, insulting me with your laughter. No, it wasn't insulting, then Bull. Then we can move on. But, I wasn't wearing shorts like but bare, here. Here's what I heard, and then I and then I tuned out. Uh, and Aditi, yeah. I think you're the same way, and I know, G, you are. What I heard was when I was in middle school, I once was sent home for wearing shorts that were too short. Right. Was, After yeah, that, it, was it turned into the Peanuts <laughs> phone conversation, and all I heard was, Wah, 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 wah. But, Aditi, but, I'll, get, I'll get us back on track because I got a football question. Well, let me let me get us oh, back on track. Okay, I got well, a football finish. question, and Aditi will appreciate this because <laughs> last night, Aditi, I was interviewing the great Iron Eagle for my podcast, uh-huh. and I mm-hmm. dropped your name in the conversation. Oh, I, we were talking about his broadcast. Off uh, it, once the podcast was over, I was talking with him oh. about his broadcast team, and I said, you know, Evan Washburn, he does an excellent job. Blah blah blah. And he talked to me about why he thinks Evan is great. And I said, you're right. He does all those things. I said, you know who else does all those things? Aditi King Kabbalah. I, I'm, you know, and anyway, he was, he doesn't, I, he told me he doesn't know you personally uh, very he well doesn't. or if at all. But uh, he, he did say to me, I've heard very good things. That's what he said. So. Well, well double- I appreciate that very much. So, to double down. Evan is Aditi. outstanding. Well, I'm sorry, what was a, that? No, to double down on that, my girlfriend's not a big football fan, but she recognizes your voice now. And that's right. And you're favorite sideline Aww. reporter. So uh, I do have I a serious question, a though. Thing. Serious football question. <laughs> I was listening to the Zero Blitz well, podcast it. yesterday with Charles Robinson mm-hmm. and Jason Fitz. And I'm curious if you okay. have any knowledge on this, if you can confirm what they said or, or tell me it's totally wrong. But essentially, Charles Robinson said that he had had conversations with people that made it seem that Paul D. Podesta was the one that forced Andrew Barry to trade Josh Dobbs. Have you heard anything? I, I can't lines? say I can't say forced, but I don't think that that was a decision that happened in a vacuum. I just feel that this is one of those things that people right now want to look back, and it's kind of one of those things like if you knew then what you know now, but how yeah. could you do that? Yeah. And I think that the well, way you that did you know at the trade deadline, though, this, Aditi. Yes. However, yeah. we do know, I can tell you, that Washington was asking for far too high of a price for Jacoby Brissett. And that price has to always be thought about within the parameters of what your roster already is. So I'll give you an example. A year ago, Kareem Hunt wanted more money. The Browns weren't saying that Kareem Hunt wasn't deserving or worthy of more money. The Browns had to consider what is already allocated to the running back room. And how much can we fairly allocate to the running back room? And that's responsible. And so perhaps Kareem Hunt, exactly, perhaps Kareem Hunt could be worth what he wanted in a vacuum. But on this particular team, where this amount of money was already allocated to Nick Chubb and the running back room, there just wasn't room to sort of have an outsized proportion go there. So when you have a $230 million quarterback who has already counted for X number of picks, you have to weigh that in what you're allocating to the quarterback room. And it's very easy for a fan to sit here and say, well, whatever, Washington wanted a third round pick or Washington wanted a second round pick or whatever. There's no more important position or there's whatever. The 20, 20th most important position on your team is your backup quarterback. So just pay it. But that's not how the Browns do business. The Browns have to sit here and think about what's already in the quarterback room. And is it worth it to give up X number of high picks? Not necessarily money, but X number of high picks to put someone in a room that truly 
you're not expecting to have to play and that you're not having to count on to play. And all the information that they had at that moment was that Deshaun Watson is as tough as they come and that he was on the upswing. You you can't account for bad luck unless I guess maybe you want to sit here and say the Browns are known for bad luck. So you should always expect bad luck. But even this situation right here, I mean, can we talk about this? Deshaun Watson played a second half against one of the best defenses in the national football league, went 14 for 14, climbed out of a two touchdown hole with a broken body. He was completely broken and put together that performance. And then when he heard that his injuries were as bad as they were, he still, his response was, well, just shoot me up and let me get through the season. I mean, the guy is trying to play through it and obviously was advised to shut down. That's the information that the Browns had at the trade deadline, that they had a quarterback who was going to do every single possible thing that he could play through, whatever he had. How do you foresee a catastrophic injury? Yeah, but Aditi, he had already been injured, and he clearly wasn't 100%. I don't I don't mind that they traded Josh Dobbs in the beginning of the season. I didn't have a problem with it at the time. Uh, they believed DTR was better, although then they gave up on him, at least in the short term, after one game. Now they're giving him another chance. But you could have had Josh – forget <coughs> forget Jacoby Brissett. And I don't know how good Josh Dobbs really is, but he's played decently this year, certainly at a higher level than the two guys they have. And they could have had they Josh Dobbs got traded to Minnesota for a seventh round pick. So they could they could have shipped their a sixth round pick, or at the very least, could have sent Arizona I can't, their fifth round pick. I, back. I'll tell you that piece to me is a yeah. little bit I don't know. I, you know, I'll be very honest with you. I haven't asked anyone. I haven't asked Andrew Barry, I haven't asked Catherine Raish, I haven't asked Kevin Stefanski. I have no idea what sort of interest, if any, what sort of conversation, if any, the Browns had with Arizona. For all I know, I do know that Josh Dobbs has very openly said that Jonathan Gannon looked him in the eye and said to him, we are not trading you. We have no intention of trading you. I know that Kyler Murray liked him in the room. I know that every team loves having Jonathan, jo- having Josh Dobbs in the room, in the quarterback room. So if Jonathan Gannon is saying, we have no plans to trade you, it might have been just like what happened with the Browns. Out of the blue, they get a phone call. The Vikings say, we're desperate. Can we have him? And Arizona doesn't even bother seeing if there are any other buyers out there. For all we know, that know, trade happened have. because the Browns knew they could get into it. Now, you would like to think that the Browns were making similar phone calls, having similar conversations regardless, and that is something that Andrew Barry is very good at, just doing his due diligence, keeping his finger on the pulse of things. But until I actually know, I don't want to definitively say, oh, they missed the boat on that. That might have happened before they even thought that it was a possibility or explored it being a possibility. Uh, Didi, can um, can the Browns make the playoffs with DTR as starting quarterback? Yes. Uh, that was definitive. I like that. <laughs> Expound. You know what? The Bra- and I said that I said this yesterday. Look, the Browns have a great, great, great championship caliber defense. This is a championship caliber defense. The missing piece that was sort of making me crazy that we all talked about a month ago was turn the ball over, get some turnovers, get some takeaways, score, make some splash plays also. And we've seen them do that. They've been outstanding at that over the course of the last month since that Indianapolis game that I was at. That's huge. They're running the ball really, really well. No Nick Chubb, doesn't really matter. They're running the ball really well. You saw the way they ran the ball on the Ravens. Again, this is not like running the ball on the Cardinals. Running the ball on the Ravens is a major statement. So all you need, this is what I said yesterday, all you need is competency at the quarterback position. Everybody wants a quarterback who can win you games. Okay, everybody wants a quarterback that when you're down two touchdowns, he can put the team on his shoulders and win you games. I don't know that DTR is going to do that. Maybe five games from now, he'll be able to do that. But that's not what the Browns are asking for right now. Right. The Browns are saying, please don't turn the ball over. Please operate the offense. And let's let the strength of our team go to work. Look at how the Steelers are winning with Kenny Pickett. Exactly yes, Kenny Pickett earlier. put together some great fourth quarter drives. Yes, Kenny Pickett has led some comeback wins. But the Steelers aren't winning on the shoulders of Kenny Pickett. No. They're running behind. They're winning behind a great defense and a run game that's finally come around. And I really, really, really believe that Kevin Stefanski having some time to prepare and tailor an offense for DTR will make a huge difference from what you saw 
in that Ravens game that he played. He had two hours. He had two hours right. before DTR was going in that game. You hadn't prepped for that. You didn't have a play sheet for that. You hadn't even had the conversation with him. What plays do you like? What plays don't you like? You're jamming all that in in two hours. And let's not forget, when P.J. Walker started against the 49ers, even Nick Bosa said they had a great offensive plan for what they were doing. So. Yeah. I put trust and faith in Alex Van Pelt and Kevin Stefanski in being able to plot and plan and shape and support DTR better, an offense around DTR better, with a week's preparation as opposed to two hours. Yeah, I, I said exactly the same thing earlier. I think you're right on the money. They've got a week to coach him up. And I, I it's all we have to judge him on right now. I think it's a little unfair. Right. Let's wait until there's more hay in the barn. And I think he's... My, the hope here is there's a progression. I don't think he's going to look great against Pittsburgh. He, as you said, he doesn't need to be. The idea here is with each start, he gains a little more confidence. He looks a little better. And by the time the playoffs roll around, he's then got a half a season under his belt and he's ready to take this team into the next stage of the season. Right. And I think, you know, another thing here, and I've said this before, I've been around the Browns for what, thir- 14 years now, 14 years I've been around the Browns. I have never been around a Browns team that has this connected a locker room. And I know that there are a lot of people that think that that's woo woo and who cares. But as somebody who's covered the National Football League for as long as I have, it really makes a difference when guys are playing for each other, when guys are hanging out beyond just, okay, we have to be on the practice field. When guys are putting in that time on their own, separate of what their coaches mandate to watch film or go over things. It does make a difference. This is a connected, close locker room. We've seen how the whole us against the world thing has worked for Michigan. It does work for teams. You've got a lot of veteran leadership on this team, on the offensive line, on the entire defense. I just, I don't think it's a death knell. It, It made me very sad for Browns fans yesterday, not because I think their season is over, but just because it really felt like a corner was turned. It really felt like all of the drama, the roller coaster, the up and down, whatever the emotions were <clears throat> from the signing of Deshaun Watson, dealing with all the ancillary noise, it just felt like such a signature statement making get behind everybody win. I mean, that one play, I keep talking about that one play where the whole team pushed Jerome Ford an extra 10 yards, even little Elijah Moore, you know, moving his feet like that. That play, I mean, that's just everything that's different about these Browns versus the Browns I've covered in the past. And so it's just, you know, like to be on that high and think, oh my goodness, here it is. And then to come plummeting down to earth. I mean, I texted Adam yesterday. I said, okay, hands up. I'm ready to believe in the curse. I guess it really is. <laughs> so is he. <laughs> it's crazy. No, you're right. Uh, Aditi, that play is, uh, that's a dichotomy of the Brown season. And if they go on to do big things and you and you say pick one play that I, that sort of encapsulates yep. what, what we just watched, I think that's it. All the guys on the field pushing towards yes. one common goal despite the odds. Aditi, we got to run. Even go you. back and watch that play. Look at how Elijah Moore, little I know. Elijah Moore, basically my side, is in there. <laughs> He's pushing them. His feet are turning. They're turning. And Joe Patonio he finally had a good here. game, Aditi. Look. Oh, stop it. Look all the way on the right. Look at it. Look at Elijah Moore. You see that little guy <laughs> over there? There he is. I mean, I, I just, I love that play. Bless I can't heart. stop that play. I know. I'm with you. It makes me Look smile every time I see it. Look at the right of your screen. Look at how the little he is. Was so much better. <laughs> That's so funny. It's like he's pushing oh, a, a blocking sled. Yeah. Aditi, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Guys, thanks so much for having me. I All won't right. see you next week. See, oh, you told me next... I won't. It's, thanks, it's oh, Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thanksgiving week. week. Okay, oh, have yeah. a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family and make Thank sure your you. kids' and shorts are always long too. enough. Yes. Thanks. Don't send them look to school with short shorts there, Aditi. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.